So it's that time of year again. Nah, forget about jolly old Saint Nick. It's time to run down our favorite comic book movies of 2017. And what a year it's been. We've had intergalactic whorehouses, Hulk schlong, and even a good female-led CBM. Still no sign of a decent Snyder DC effort though. But hey, maybe Santa will bring you the BVS Extended Edition for Christmas. Eh? With so many of this year's CBMs earning rave reviews and a shit ton of money, this list was no easy task. And we'll say it up front, we didn't include Valerian or Kingsman 2 because honestly, we didn't see them. But who did, right? By all accounts, they were total turds, so let's just say they came joint last place and get right on with this. Obvious spoiler alert, and if you're one of these people who thinks Snyder is some sort of god, get your butt hurt cream at the ready. Number 7, Justice League. After Marvel's extraordinary head start, it was always going to be an uphill battle for DC to compete in the shared universe game. There was some fun to be had, like the headbutt off scene, and Snyder's style finally seemed suited to the Flash scenes, but the film is largely bogged down by a lot of heavy lifting bringing the league together. And then there's old hamster face Henry Cavill and his fake moustache lip. Not the best image for the very first scene in your movie? As big DC fans, it's a shame Warner Brothers can't seem to get their shit together post-Nolan. Especially with this much acting muscle at their disposal. And if Justice League doesn't fare well at the box office, the temptation may well be to hit the reset button. Maybe via Flashpoint? Whatever happens, I suppose we always have the TV side to fall back on. Ah, gimptastic. Number 6, Lego Batman. It says a lot about Justice League when the Lego movie version of one of its main characters is better. Lego Batman was a great film, with plenty of laughs for kids and grown-ups alike. From bat nips to bat belts, the movie played on many long-running bat gags, with the dulcet tones of that guy from Arrested Development to anchor everything down. Oh, and the squeaky tones of that other guy from the show too. The movie's a welcome addition to the Bat franchise, bringing back some goofiness to what has become something of a dark and depressing series of late. With its success, you have to wonder, who gets the Lego treatment next? We say give Green Lantern a go. It's probably the only screen oh, yeah. time he's going to see in the next few years. And surely, how's constructs lend themselves well to Lego? He could even build a successful live-action shared universe? Oh wait, not, not even Lego can do that. Number 5, Wonder Woman. Despite the worldwide mass hysteria, Wonder Woman wasn't the best the year had to offer, especially considering some of the competition, but we'll get onto that. It was a good female-led movie, but probably most amazingly, it was a good DC movie, even if we did line Brett Ratner's pockets by going to see it. Yes, the film was enjoyable, but it left a little to be desired. Not that we're massive sexists or anything. There was some good character work, plus a nice bit of gender role reversal, but things kind of fell apart in the third act monster battle CGI fest as they often do with these things. Regardless of its shortcomings, Gal Gadot shone as Diana, giving at least a glimmer of hope on the DC movie horizon. Hopefully Warner's learned something from this outing. Just don't hire Snyder ever again. Number four, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. Guardians 2 mostly lived up to the hype with a satisfying follow-up to the original, even if things felt a little more labored this time around. The first volume dealt with the loss of Peter Quill's mom, so it's fitting that the second deals with his asshole dad, something many of us can relate to. Thankfully, his surrogate father, Mary Poppins, floats in to save the day, restoring our faith in men. Well, centurions, technically. As expected, the yucks are present and accounted for, but this movie also had the feels, followed by even more yucks. As such, Drax becomes the unexpected MVG, and we're all excited to see what happens when this bunch of a-holes meets this bunch of Avengers next year. Number 3, Spider-Man Homecoming. How do you make Spider-Man appealing to a new generation? You make Peter a bumbling idiot, obviously. Spider-Millennial wasn't just fun, it gave us a great villain and brought the Sony held characters back to the MCU fold, which may well pave the way for Fox to join the party too. One minor criticism is that the Spider franchise has already covered a lot of ground, so Homecoming felt almost like a scrapbook of all the things Spidey hasn't done on screen yet. Spidey underwater, Spidey trapped inside a truck. Spidey with no buildings to web swing from? Spidey on a motherfucking plane? Yeah, it's all there, but it's all enjoyable, and at least he didn't turn into an emo and start dancing this time. Number 2, Thor Ragnarok. Thor's first two solo outings were underwhelming to say the least, but Ragnarok pulls out all the stops to distinguish itself from past myth dakes. It's always great to see a CBM that ain't afraid to take some risks, and Thor is suitably wacky, and it's this factor which elevates it above Homecoming. It's clear the cast and crew are having a great time, and that sense of fun really comes through. It has its problems, of course, but slightly odd tonal shifts aside, who didn't enjoy seeing Thor and Hulk beat the shit out of each other gladiator style? Even if we still don't have a definitive answer to who'd win the fight. God damn you, Goldblum. 
Thor was just about to win? Number one, Justice League, I mean Logan. Cinematically speaking, Logan is by far the best of the bunch. There are just so many damn levels to this movie. First and foremost, it finally delivers on the brutal, R-rated nature of the title character. And it only took 17 years and nine movies to get there. Ultimately, Logan is a film about family, reconciliation, and killing. Lots and lots of killing. Even the eight-year-old is getting in on the action. Now there's a child actor gone bad story just waiting to happen. To be fair, Logan is probably one of the best CBMs of all time. And it feels a little strange heaping this much praise on Fox. A movie studio that's much like a seasoned gold digger. They may have sucked several times over, but it was only a matter of time before they hit pay dirt. Question is, can they keep up this good form? Surely Dark Phoenix will break the streak, no? So there's the list. No doubt 2018 will deliver some more marvellous and DC-licious comic book movies with Black Panther, Deadpool 2, not to mention Infinity War all on the way. But for now, which 2017 movie was your favourite? Give us your rundown in the comics and let us know if Kingsman and Valerian are worth the watch. And if you are already in the Christmas mood, check out this fun, festive CBM song we did last year. It should put a smile on the face of even the biggest Scrooges out there. Thanks for watching, fellow nerds.